Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Again, my name is Simon Morris. I'm the CEO of Iris Tech Software. As CEO of Cogniview Corporation, a vision processor technology company that was acquired by NXP Semiconductor last year, I know how complicated vision processing and the human eye are. Iris Tech, for the first time, takes the science of the eye and incorporates it in software into the display world. It's frustrating to view your display device, smartphone, tablet, laptop, in bright light. Why is that? There are two billion display devices manufactured every year, but they're all manufactured with the assumption that our eyes are the same, the eyes of a 25-year-old male in room lighting. That's clearly not the case. In the dark environment, the brightness of the display is the number one contributor to eye strain and eye fatigue, in some cases causes headaches. The major display, uh, display device manufacturers like Samsung and Apple, of course, are spending billions of dollars on advancing display technologies and using sort of traditional hardware-centric image processing approaches to try to address these problems, including uh, the introduction more recently of auto brightness capabilities. But brightness is a double-edged sword. Brightness, of course, when you increase the brightness, you can improve the visibility, but you increase the eye strain and the eye fatigue, and of course, you kill the battery because the display is 80% of the power consumed. Of course, reduce the, bright reduce the brightness, and you can't read the display. It's basically putting engineering before science, and that's the difference. We take a, Iris Tech has taken a different approach. It's employed physiologists to model how the eye works, taking the science, taking the models of those eyes, combining with patent-pending, lightweight image processing algorithms to solve these problems. So we take a washed-out display experience in bright light, actually don't change the brightness, we restore the color and contrast and make that display readable. In the dark environment where you can't read the display, the brightness is so low, again, we restore the color and contrast at 1 20th of the power of the display and make that display now readable. The market's huge. It's 2 billion devices manufactured every year. Every one of those display devices can use Iris Tech software. Uh, in a mobile market, roughly about 50 cents to a buck can be made per unit on licensing video and image processing IP, which translates to about a billion to $2 billion revenue stream for Iris Tech software. We think the early adopters will be VR headsets, smartphones, and smartwatches where the pain points is the biggest. They're mobile and they're, they're battery operated. So what we do is we take a software solution and make a display smart, make it model how your eye is really behaving, improving the visibility and reducing the eye strain, redu uh, reducing the power consumption. It's not only a big market, but it's a growing market. So there, there are, uh, of course, three major sub-segments that comprise most of this market. Smartphones and now VR headsets and smartwatches, they're all growing markets. Just looking at the display panel market alone, it's $100 billion last year, and that's going to grow to about $150 billion in 2020. We launched our first software product, PowerSave, earlier this year, and in a very short order, we have more than half a dozen of the uh, consumer device manufacturers uh, and automotive manufacturers in uh, formal evaluations. We expect our first production licensing wins later this year. Of course, we're rounded out, the team's rounded out with two brilliant co-founders, Tara Akavan and Afsun Sudi. Uh, they both have their PhDs in image processing and they are the inventors of the technology. Now, we're not just making displays smart so they adapt to the environment, we're also going to personalize the display. So we're, our tech, next version of our technology is actually going to adjust for the age and gender, solving problems like color blindness. And potentially, I'm not going to promise this one, but maybe eliminating the uh, a need for reading glasses. Just like you would want to have shoes that fit, you want displays to match how your eyes work. We're raising a $1.75 million seed round right now, and uh, we have a million of that committed. We expect to close this month. That will be used to finance the first phase of the business plan, which is the B2B licensing of our first product, PowerSave. That will be followed with a second round in uh, early next year of $5 million, which we use to commercialize the personalization technology. If you want to see a demonstration, we have the demo table over there, and you can see our first product, PowerSave, in, in action. Thank you. Thank you. In order to adjust the displays uh, effectively, you need to partner with the OS manufacturers. Is that correct? Uh, they, yeah, not really. We go directly to the device manufacturer. So it's a, it's a middleware library that you load on Android. So the demonstration we have, for instance, what we give to the customers right now is actually a self-contained contained, encrypted APK. Uh, when they want to integrate it in the device and have it run all the time, it's a middleware library, just like the auto brightness app. 
Got it. So, so, but for, so basically it's Android only right now cause, until you negotiate something with Apple. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's OS agnostic. I mean, it's a, it's a C code and, and OpenGL rendering calls, basically. It's about 5,000 lines of code in the first implementation. Kind of following on that, what type of sensors need to exist on the device? Is it it, well, to work, you need an ambient sensor, but it's just about everything does, including uh, the latest displays in cars have ambient sensors built in. So we tap into the ambient sensor just like the auto brightness feature does. And in most cases, the customers we're working with are going to add it alongside it. So, uh, you know, just have your, you probably don't know this, but in your features, you can go and turn off your auto brightness feature. There will be another button there that will turn on something like eye care, they call it. And uh, you can turn, that will turn on iris tech and it will smartly adapt the display to your eyes. How do you think about device manufacturers building, them, building this in-house? I mean, you guys are very well, brilliant. <laughs> uh, there's four of you. So. That's the, uh, yeah. well, there's actually more than that, but uh, there's six of us. <laughs> <laughs> six of us and a couple of part-time guys, and one of them back there. <laughs> um, I've done this a few times, actually, three startups, and I've uh, been lucky on two. Uh, hopefully, there's a, a little bit of luck coming here, too. The big dis display device manufacturers are, of course, investing in the space. They're not ignoring it. Apple's big announcement on their last iOS release in the phone was the uh, night shift mode. Um, they also have the uh, color, um, color temperature enhancement, so it, uh, the, the whiteness of the display adapts to it. So they, they are researching in this area. The difference is what we've seen and what we know from even the color experts like Technicolor, which is one of the strategic partners, potentially, for us. We're uh, working with them right now. They're a co big color company is that we did approach it from the start from a, a very different way, which is using the physiology of the eye, taking those models, they're, they're protected, uh, part of the patents actually, um, and incorporating that in the solution. Everybody else is, is basically tried to attack it from a typical pixel bashing approach, which is heavy on image processing, typically in hardware. So there is actually a, there is a hardware block in the Qualcomm chip today that does a, uh, a minor adjustment for the display in bright light conditions. It's from a company called Apico, which got acquired last, year, last week by ARM for $350 million. It was a potential competitor for us, which is now part of ARM. But, uh, so they are doing it. So far, to, do, to deal with it, they've licensed in technology in the case of Apico stuff. Nobody's got a solution right now for the dark environment. Uh, we got two patents in that space, one of which is a, uh, hopefully a discovery patent, which is hugely blocking patent, because uh, nobody else has done it this way. So, so maybe I missed something. I understand the, uh, the power consumption issues. Uh, I'm not sure I followed the personalization issue. Like, like, like how, how personalization you, is uh, personalization would be colorblindness, for instance. Uh, that's something you can correct in the display. Uh, so, if some 10% of men are colorblind, so you can actually, uh, with our platform, our approach that we've taken, you can actually correct for those effects. Personalization would include age and gender. Um, so, you actually, as you age, your color rendering ability morphs. And to the individual, it may not be that important, but to advertisers on Facebook and Twitter, where color is the number one ingredient to uh, getting your attention on an advertisement, it's hugely important. The second, but is that's something what, I, as a consumer, need to do? I, no. How do you know that I'm color? It, well, Facebook and Twitter would be in your profile. Okay, so if they're taking advantage of our tech in an advertising, rendering of an advertisement, that information's already there, and Facebook would charge a small delta for the personalization of the advertisement, matching up with your age and gender in your profile. Otherwise, you've got to enter it. In the case of a car, they're going to have, this is where car space was kind of where I was at with the vision technology last year. They'll have cockpit cameras. And uh, one of the things a cockpit camera will do is will place your head, and it can actually do an age and gender uh, grouping. It won't get you exact, but it will put you in the right, right group so that it knows whether you're 50 or 25. And that's where the big difference is. When you're 50, you look at what was white when you're 25 will look a little pinkish when you're 50. Does your team have experience selling in this market? Uh, well, myself, uh, Paul in the back there, and okay. the guy I'm bringing on board who worked at uh, Marvell. Marvell and was a VP of the mobile group. Okay. Yeah. I'm just doing the actually closing part of the round right now, so we're bringing these guys on board today. Congrats. Thanks. As your um, potential customers are evaluating you guys, you know, what is, you know, what is the hurdle they need to get over to, to say yes? What is the evaluation process looking like? Um, well, I would say there's always the, uh, the naysayers in the R&D groups. Uh, that's typical. Uh, I encountered that at my last company, Cognivue. So we were licensing a vision processor core to the big chip companies and telling them that they didn't know how to solve the vision problem, uh, essentially. 
but uh, so you always find that the, the biggest competition for us, there's a few smaller companies out there like Apico, which just got acquired. Um, but generally speaking, the big R&D groups feel that they you know, have this under control. So they're usually saying, oh, we've heard this before. We, we, you know, we don't think you can really make a difference. And so we have to get through that hurdle. Uh, it's part of the reason why we actually haven't gone out to Samsung or Apple yet. So the guys we've actually engaged with were uh, sort of the, the guys who are trying to push up to that, that level. So Oppo Mobile, Huawei Mobile, uh, Xiaomi, uh, these guys that uh, were trying to steal away the market share from them. And do you have a sense of your, oh, looks like that's, that's it. We'll have to ask you later. Thanks okay. for your presentation. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.